Hello there guys and gals, the Welsh Hunter here with a video that can hopefully just help you out while we end up remaining stuck in lockdown and quarantine thanks to the inevitable second wave of the coronavirus, especially for those in the UK. <laughs> or if not, and we do get past it, then I've got some awesome games for you to play right now. So we all know about Xbox Game Pass and if you don't, honestly it is the greatest invention in gaming bar none. Get it downloaded for free right now. Uh, you know, various content creators have made videos about the easiest games on Game Pass for Gamerscore, and we've done them all, pretty much, let's face it. But this video is a little different. Now, I will be telling you 20 of the very best games on Xbox Game Pass to download and play right now. Now, don't get me wrong, there will still be plenty of Gamerscore to still be had. There are varying differences in the games, and they may even seem a bit obvious as mainly sort of big AAA titles. But once you see this list, you may not have even realised all of these incredible games were even on there. Just think, these games are still flying up in ye old full value retail price. So to be able to play these for basically next to nothing, well, I mean, you're looking at instead of spending, well, I mean, hundreds and hundreds of pounds on all these games, you're only spending eight to 11 pounds or dollars a month. Yes, mate. Now another reason I have made this to be honest, I've seen a lot of people bashing Game Pass lately with it's either not good value for money or there's only games like Minecraft Dungeons on there. By the way, that's still a top game in itself, so don't worry about that. So this is to nicely show those skeptics that Game Pass is incredible value for money and that it is definitely worth grabbing. Now this isn't a list of any order of any kind, it's just 20 of the best that you can have for sort of free right now. And we begin with... Dead Rising 4 slash Dead Island. Now, I've started off then with a sort of two for one. You know, Dead Rising has always had that charm and that fun about it. You know, crafting obscene weapons to destroy zombies with. It is all just seriously good fun. And with Dead Island, I mean, it was and still is a top game. And in my opinion, the best Dead Island game to come out. The others, honestly, after, sort of felt a bit flat in comparison. And sort of sticking with the horror kind of theme, up next is Alien Isolation. Now, there are few better games, to be honest, on this list than Alien Isolation. It's a brilliant survival horror game from Creative Assembly and Sega that what you have to do is basically survive in an alien-infested ship. It's pretty self-explanatory. I mean, you've probably seen all the characters in horror films where they make stupid mistake and then get their face eaten off. This is your chance to prove that you're better than them. And this is a cracking game to begin with. And next up then, we'll sort of get this one out the way, but it is probably a lot of people's choice for game of the decade, and they're not, well, they're not really wrong there, to be honest. The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. As I've said, people have said this is definitely the best game of the decade, and you know what? It is hard to dis disagree with them. The massive open-world RPG well, you look at it, and the map's absolutely massive, and there's just so many side quests. There's so many things to do. A 60-plus hour completion time if you just wanted to slam through the main story in itself. And it's about 150 to 200 hours if you want to get all the achievements. You know, as I've said, this is... I mean, it presents an incredible amount of value. Absolutely incredible. The amount of stuff you can do for it, playing for it uh, next to nothing, is just incredible. And it will keep you entertained for... <laughs> Honestly, months and months if you wanted to just slam through all of the game. Next up then, we have the Caped Crusader in Batman Arkham Knight. Now, whatever you think of Robert Pattinson being the new Batman or any of the Batmans in the past, you can always count on the this Batman trilogy to be just one of the very best you will ever, ever play. Definitely worth checking this one out. This, again, is the final entry in Rocksteady's Batman trilogy. But it does also work alone as a great standalone title as you obviously play as Batman, doing Batman things as you've done in the uh, previous two games. Only this time you're able to smash everyone with the Batmobile, so it is definitely worth picking this one up. Absolutely fantastic. About 50 to 60 hours uh, completion time. And next up on the list then, we have Tekken 7. Now I know... On Xbox Game Pass, there are plenty of fighting games for you to just get into. But quite honestly, this is the best of the bunch. Honestly, without a doubt, bar none. Uh, not only has it sort of had two and a half years, I think, to sort of uh, sort out any kinks, which they have done brilliantly. 
it, it feels more polished. There's been a lot of significant strides which Tekken has made uh, going forward with the 10th entry in the series. And you've got your sort of rage arts, you've got your power crushes to the mix. And that in itself just creates closer and way more intense matches between players of various levels of skills. Whether you're just starting out or whether you are absolutely massively high. It, it Honestly, it always creates these close matches and it is just perfect. And now we have Final Fantasy 9 and 15. Again, another two for one. And these are just some epic games in the ever long and ever loved franchise. With 9 being played out as more of a fantasy game, like sort of an illustrated book, but it does some have incredible graphics in it. Now it's not as popular as some of the games in the past, especially number seven, which fans believe to be the best game of all time. But if you play it just the once, I promise you will absolutely enjoy it. As for 15, graphically it's absolutely stunning, but it does do what the game is meant to do, and they do it right. There's a huge world with so many towns, NPCs, monsters and side quests, plus you can nip into dungeons for some levelling up if needed. On top of that, the gameplay in itself is actually very fun too, so pick both of these up if RPGs are your thing. And we will be sticking with the RPGs, only this time this is a, probably a little bit more manageable and still extremely action-packed. Devil May Cry is an absolutely ambitious open-world action game with a hell of a lot of RPG elements to it. Now, to be honest, basically it won a whole heap of Action Game of the Year awards but only six months ago, if that. So it is very nice to see it already available on Xbox Game Pass to download and play. Even if you're not a fan of the new Dante, trust me, you will be wanting to pick this up and play. Next up, we're going for something just a little different in the terms of Sea of Thieves. Now, this is an absolutely fantastic game by developers and publishers Rare. This swashbuckling adventure, the Sea of Thieves, it, will, it basically lets you take on the role of a pirate, obviously sailing the seas of a fantastical world, and again, you can do it either on your own or you can do it as part of a crew of up to four members. And again, the choice is yours. The whole world is yours. You can focus either on trading, plundering the loot of others, treasure hunting yourself. It is an absolutely fantastic title for those who, again, like I said, you, you can either do it in an op you can play with others in an open world environment mm -hmm. or you can just do it by yourself. Now, they updated it quite a lot as there was one achievement which was absolutely near near impossible to get. I think there was only one or two guys that had ever gotten it before the update, which kind of sucks for them. But still, if you're looking for something just to pick up and play, this is definitely one to do it. It is fantastic. Now then, whatever you think of Bethesda, you cannot deny they have made some fantastic games in the past and this is another one. Now you won't find the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim on Xbox Game Pass, but you will find the next best thing, which is the Elder Scrolls Online. It's an MMO set in the world of Tamriel, and the and basically the game has you select from one of only three factions aligned by their uh, geographic locations in the world. Now of course, as you can imagine, you'll be able to form guilds to fight against one another, do quests with just thousands and thousands of other people, completely exploring the entire whole world all without paying a monthly fee such as they do with World of Warcraft etc. Definitely a brilliant brilliant game nonetheless. And next up we have, have another brilliantly recent one that's just been added Red Dead Redemption 2. Now this is another just fantastic game. If you enjoyed the first one you will definitely enjoy the second one. The magnum opus western set at the turn of the 19th century is an absolutely huge open world action game. The depth of its characters is fantastic, the endless possibilities it gives you where you're doing all side quests and side, side missions and just like The Witcher 3 it basically seemingly never ends. But there are so many things to like about this game you will never get bored. Never never never. Whether online or solo. Now for this next game, this has been on Game Pass since day one and in my opinion it is one of the best Horizon games out there, whereas a lot of people still prefer 2, or the second game, Forza Horizon 4 that is. And I can see why people still prefer 2, but 
Racing and smashing through the streets of Britain, a whole new thing's been added including a ton of DLC, which includes new stories and a battle royale mode. It's fun and it doesn't have as much grind as number 2 and number 3 did in my opinion. But this one is for you if you're looking for something enjoyable and a little more stress free game to play. Next up is another one of Microsoft's big hitters and it has been on Game Pass since day one and that is Gears 5. Now, of course brilliant to free at launch and you can just see why this game is just fantastic. Not only does this game have a brilliant single player story that follows the events straight out of Gears of War 4, but it has, as all the previous Gears games have done, it has fantastic multiplayer modes that are available as part of the package too. So whether you're just looking for something to just glide through in a story mode, or you're looking for some big online hitters, honestly grab this game. It is sensational. I loved it. And up next then we have yet another Bethesda classic, Rage 2. Now when it was uh, first released in 2019, it wasn't really the most well received game. Not as the original Rage was in 2011. But what you can get from this game is a sort of Mad Max kind of experience that you're just smashing through Wastelanders, Super Mutants, and you're just absolutely destroying everything you come across in the Badlands. But even though, as I said, it wasn't the most well received game when it first came out, it is still a whole lot of fun. This is definitely one you can pick up and play and enjoy. Now we have an absolute monster. We have Halo, the Master Chief Collection. Now if you're wondering what the Master Chief Collection is, basically it is the best thing to happen to any Halo fan since, I don't know, they first found out they could jizz in their pants or something. But <laughs> what you get then is you get Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary and the Anniversary Edition of Halo 2, Halo 3 and Halo 4. Not only does it include all those games single player, it includes all the multiplayer maps as well so literally you've got four games basically for the price of not even anything four games for the price of nothing it is absolutely sensational and well if you're like I said even if you're not a Halo fan you will enjoy the game as it is one of the best that has basically been released and up next we have Sort of something which is extremely similar to Fallout, so if you definitely enjoyed your Elder Scrolls and your Fallout, you are going to love this game. The Outer Worlds from developers Obsidian Entertainment. As I said, they take... What, what they've done is move Fallout, the Fallout game, and they've moved it into space. So you still get the brilliant writing, the humour throughout the game, the uh, <laughs> excellent satire, the arsenal, and what you've got is... And even, honestly, an even better and even funnier Fallout. It is just wild from start to finish. Definitely worth picking up and playing. Very enjoyable. Loved it. And up next then, we have admittedly one game that can potentially be a little bit tricky to get into. Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain. Now, don't get me wrong. The game is absolutely just incredible. Fans and you know, just casual gamers alike absolutely love the game. But like I said, it can be tricky to get into, but once you sort of know what you're doing, it will invigorate your entire world as what you're playing it. So the gameplay is absolutely brilliant. We've got exposed intestines, we've got explosions everywhere, we've got a half new woman walking around because she apparently needs to breathe through her skin, which, hey, nobody's complaining about to be honest. And it doesn't matter that she's a game character, okay? But overall, this game is a solid, a solid, easy 10 out of 10. Absolutely brilliant. And up next is one which could be a surprise and one that some may not have heard of. But it is an absolute beauty in Outer Wilds. Now, this little action-adventure exploration game, it tasks you with learning as much about the pint-sized universe you're in as you can in 22 minutes. And after that 22 minutes is up, you've got to learn what you can, and sort of, if you're given 22 more minutes, what would you do with that time? So, basically, in 22 minutes, you'll, the, the sun will go supernova, and you will basically have to start it all over again. So, what you're doing is going through the game in as much time as you can before the sun goes supernova and then you've got to do it all again it is just an absolute beautiful game 
which really does get you thinking and it's just one that you I promise will enjoy it is phenomenal now this next entry did take years to finally release but for those who love the series or just getting into it Kingdom Hearts 3 is an absolute phenomenon now the story is slightly slow, a little bit convoluted for anyone who's new to the series on this one, but once you get past the sort of intro, you will find just this action-packed, beautifully charming, and in just intense adventure, which, I mean, you can compare it to sort of Final Fantasy, but with obviously you've got all the Disney stuff, you've got your Toy Stories, and uh, Goofy, and all them Disney characters in like a Final Fantasy world, if you wish. To be honest, it is such a good game, and it's surprising. It may be surprising to some, but it's definitely worth a pick up and play. Brilliantly done. So next up, we have something that, honestly, on the first game of Ori and the Blind Forest, it was sensational. It was definitely a lot of people's favourites. It was heartfelt, it was challenging, it was very beautiful. And the whole game was just intriguing, it just oozed beautiful and personality and the second game does it even better see they don't have to be all triple a titles to be mentioned ori and the will of the wisp is an, an just an unbelievable game it's absolutely fantastic it's a brilliant sequel it's, we've got new combat elements uh like a shard system that we didn't have in the first one but that basically allows for more customization of the abilities of ori and obviously still a lot of puzzle solving but it breaks it up lovely with these memorable big boss battles which are challenging but not to the point where you want to throw your controller overall it is just one stunning stunning game And last up then is another one of my personal favourites. I've loved these games from the very start, and this is Monster Hunter World. This is just an incredible franchise, and it gets even better with this one. For one, this was absolutely critically acclaimed, and, you know, it basically does what it says in the titles. You are hunting monsters. It, you know, it may sound a bit sort of cliche, maybe even a little bit childish, but it's fast, it's frenetic. The, the gameplay, the grinding, it's just everything just comes together so smoothly and so nicely. It's, you know, I mean, if you were to say, oh, in God of Wars, you just hunt godlike creatures. Actually, that does sound better, doesn't it? But anyway, still, whatever you think, the Monster Hunter world is stunning. The battles are absolutely fantastic. You can do this on your own, probably better and more enjoyable to do this with friends. But either way, this is one fantastically quick game. Well, not quick to complete, but it's a brilliantly paced, epic game that you will enjoy over and over again. So that's it then, guys and gals. That is 20, plus a few more actually, of the best, best games that you can download on Xbox Game Pass right now. Like I said, the link will be in the description below to download Xbox Game Pass if you haven't. The link will be in, uh, in the des des description below for all of these games that I've mentioned. But thank you so, so much for watching, guys and gals. I hope this video has helped and that you start something new and that you will enjoy it. And again, like I said, I'm on my uh, all on my socials as well. I'm on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Patreon. So if I've seen you guys on any of them, thank you so much for taking the time out to uh, <clears throat> take a look. And again, thank you very much for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe, of course. And I shall see you in the next one. Big love.